graduating and I won't get to see them very often. Um, but at this time, we'll go ahead and get started and I would like to introduce our director, Dr. Sheeta Hineberry. Um, she is the director of the Master of International Ag Program. She is a Regents Professor of Agricultural Economics and she is a Don and Kathy Humphreys Chair in International Studies. Please help me in welcoming Dr. Hineberry. To start by congratulating uh, the NIA class of uh, 2014 on your great success. Um, I know that many of you, both graduates and families, have been waiting for many, for at least a year, <laughs> for this day. You have made a significant accomplishment finishing a degree, and this ceremony is a great testament to that. Uh, parents, I know how you feel. I always say that. I have two sons, and they're both in school. They both graduated, and they're doing graduate studies. And I know every time they walk on the stage, I just, my heart starts beating. And it's just a special thing about seeing your child, um, your sons and daughters uh, graduating. I'd like to take just a minute to give a brief description of the program. Uh, the Master of International Agriculture, for short, we call it NIA, was um, formed, really was created in the fall of 2008. So we are relatively new compared to other programs. Um, and we started with only four students. When this program started, we were not sure if it would have enough students to continue. And we have, since then, we have graduated over 100. Katie, how many? 100. Not only we graduated them, really most, the majority of them, and I must say it's, it's equal or better than many academic depart other academic departments in really great jobs. And I'm just looking here, and some of you already are placed, and so quickly. And we are proud of you. And for those of you who are, haven't even started looking, uh, I know you're going to be placed. And let us know, because do not have a job, but we, we, I always record these. And Katie does, too. We have an Excel sheet. And then we go around campus, around other universities, and we brag about you. <laughs> That's why you have signed the release of, um, of permission. You have given us permission to use your photos your reports, your statements, impact statements, because I'll be like to brag about you. And we do that constantly. <laughs> now we have about 60 students. So we went from four to 60. We are one of the largest master degree programs um, in the College of Agriculture and probably on campus, if I had to um, guess. The Master of International Agriculture has gained recognition not just in Oklahoma, but across the United States and even in some other countries. We have dual degree programs with two universities in, P in Mexico and a Peace Corps Master program. This recognition has brought us several new applicants for next spring and basically for 2015. Flexibility of the program has allowed our students to focus on areas that they are interested in, considering their comparative advantage and the career path they would like to pursue. So when you're job interviewing, you can make a story about your courses, how you created your basically your plan of study and took courses that you were passionate about and you want to get, you know, to, to work in those areas. Not many students can say that, because a lot of them have to take classes that they have to take. 
One of our accomplishments this year has been signing of a dual degree agreement with Chipingo University, and we have our first student from Chipingo here standing in the back. And Chipingo University, Mexico, every time I say it's the most prestigious equivalent to a land grant university in Mexico, she corrects me. She says, in Latin America. <laughs> and for example, to the quality of their students, here's Zyra. She graduated her undergraduate degree from Carleton University. She's from Mexico. She went to Carleton and then uh, went to Chipingo and signed up for this dual degree program. Um, and then we have created a, um, an international agriculture as a major. We used to be general agriculture with an option in international agriculture. Now all of you have had the option of choosing international agriculture as a major. You all remember Katie's numerous emails. Sign up if you want to have your degree to say major international agriculture. So that's quite an accomplishment. Because I can confidently say, you're only one of the three universities that has a major in international agriculture. The other you know, two universities are University of California, Davis, which is a very prestigious university, especially prestigious because I did a postdoctoral fellowship there. <laughs> and the Cornell University, which is um, also very prestigious. And they, their student population is like you guys. It's, they, they, they pick the cream of the crop. Um, and we have now a Master of Science in addition to a Master of Agriculture. So some of you, they both have their advantages, and this is, the, this is the first group that you could have had a Master of Science. And again, you remember Katie's numerous emails that you can pick Master of Science or Master of Agriculture. Now I'd like to say that to you parents, guests, and our Dean of Agriculture, thank you, who came to our ceremonies. The success of any academic program is directly related to the commitment and success of its students. And we have been very fortunate to have a group of, great group of students in our program. Our students are committed and passionate for international related work. And I know every one of you are, because I read your, your international experience reports. And it's just amazing. Some of them bring tears to your eyes. And their impact statements when you read what, what these students have learned and how passionate they are in helping in a global setting. And um, our graduates usually have landed great jobs in business, banking, nonprofits, academics, and state and federal governments. So um, we have among our students, we have Katie will read the bios, and you will see. Um, you know, what they're doing now and uh, what they will be doing. And I want to again say, students, you have now become a part of a small percentage of the population who holds graduate degrees. Only 8% of the U.S. population has earned a master's degree. You are joining an even more elite group if you look at the international statistics on college degrees. So don't fear of anything. You can, you can do, you can accomplish. This program has prepared you to not only succeed at your future positions, but has prepared you to become a global humanitarian. You already have had a taste of the fulfillment, fulfillment and an inner satisfaction that comes with helping others through your international experiences and internships. So many of you, in order to complete, um, most, all of you, have worked with NGOs in developed countries or, or other organizations in, in developing countries, and again, you can, uh, or developed countries. So by this, I would like to end, and uh, I'd like to uh, uh, recognize our guests, um, our special guests today. Um, and before that, I would like to say MIAP is an interdisciplinary program within the College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University. And our students take courses from a wide range of departments and disciplines. This program could not have succeeded without the support of the faculty in those departments. And on behalf of the class, I would like to say big thanks to those faculty members 
that have helped our students and also those who have shared their international work experiences in our seminars class. Now this, again, this year for the first time this fall, we had courses in our department offered by faculty outside our department. We have sustainability and soil source for world population and uh, food security and all that offered. We had three courses, Ag IN courses by other faculty offered in agriculture. And now we have a whole list of faculty in line that would like to offer classes for our students. So you see, and I get comments all the time. It's not just one or two times. They call me faculty and they say, you know, we had our students, they were really good. Can you sign them up in our classes? Now, I would like from administration, from uh, administration to introduce um, Dr. Kuhn. Dr. Kuhn, would you give a welcome comment? Thank you, Dr. Henneberry. And I, I just want to acknowledge that uh, all of that accomplishment since 2008, a lot of that was uh, a heavy load that she's carried, and she's really provided an excellent leadership for us through that time. Now I know that not because I was here, but because I've, I've read and seen and, and visited with people about how this works. And, and it, it really is a, a testament to your, your diligence and your intelligence and your, your dedication that we're at this point today. So um, I also am, am very proud of the fact that we are one of the three Lang Grant universities that have an international agriculture degree. And, and uh, so I'm really pleased that we, we have another group of students uh, leaving from this and, and taking that with them. Um, it, the international work, it really strengthens and enriches the work that we do here in Oklahoma. We gain so much from, uh, to the benefit of Oklahoma from what our students learn in their international work. And hopefully uh, that's reciprocated by uh, producing benefits for the countries where, where they do their work and where they will be pursuing their careers. So uh, it really is meant to be and really functions as a win-win uh, a uh, for Oklahoma and for many other countries uh, around the world uh, that we have this program and that our students are so dedicated to that. So um, I really appreciate your diligence in seeing yourselves through this program and your hard work in, the, in your in-country experience and I really look forward to hearing those stories. Uh, we need more than a spreadsheet to capture the stories of, of the impacts that you're going to have in your careers. So thank you so much for being a part of, of OSU and for being a part of the College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources here at OSU. And good luck. Thank you. Go folks. I know how busy our dean is today. Can you imagine all the departments would want to have him at their wedding ceremony? And our dean, I must say, he's a new dean. He came to us um, last summer, and he has a significant international experience. And during his seminar, he talked about that. If you read his bio, you know that he's very passionate and uh, has a lot of experience in, in a in global and other countries. So, and he has led study abroad courses for many years. So he comes here with a lot of experience in this area, and we are very happy. Thank you, Dr. Dean Kuhn. We really appreciate having you. I also would like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Mike Schnelli. He is uh, he's really a good supporter. Of us. And we appreciate him. He, he had an international student, several actually, that he takes around and they're interested in horticulture. And he's a professor of uh, horticulture. And he took them around greenhouses and he's, he's very devoted and he's always, what can I do for your students? Um, so um, I would like to, uh, to introduce our uh, commencement speaker. I haven't missed anybody, Katie, have I? I haven't seen anybody else. Um, our commencement speaker, we are very glad that Senator Long could be here to, to be our commencement speaker for this uh, December ceremonies. Um, uh, Senator Long uh, graduated from Oklahoma A&M in 1956. 
that's, that was probably before some of your parents were born, but so we have uh, a very experienced bee person. I must um, say that he, he is also very committed to our program. And thank you, Sarah. He always comes to all our functions and um, likes to talk to our students, and um, that's very passionate. Um, he received his Bachelor of Science degree in agricultural education. Along with his father and brother, they owned and operated four John Deere de dealerships in north central Oklahoma and operated a 3,000 acre wheat and cattle farm. He has traveled the world marketing U.S. wheat as a member of the Oklahoma Wheat Commission. From 1979 to 1988, he was a regent for OSU and the A&M Colleges and served as state senator for North Central Oklahoma from 1988 to 1996. He has been on mission trips to eight countries around the world and three times to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. He currently lives in Stillwater with his wife, Claudine Allred. I tell you, this, you all have one of the most exciting degrees that can be. And today, when we read the paper about all the negative things that's going on around the world, to think that you have an international degree in agriculture. And um, I just, for fun, you know, I've been in agriculture all my life, but I just, what's, what's the current thing they're talking about agriculture? Agriculture, the cultivation of plants, animals, fungi, and other life forming life forms for food, fiber, biofuel, medicinals, and other products used to sustain and enhance human life. What more is it? I mean, it's a basic. If you don't have what you all got, we ain't going to exist. And to think that international. When I have, uh, when my son, grandsons were 16, I, back in some good years, I told them I'd take them any place in the world that they'd like to go when they became 16. Well, my grandson Tyler, I'm going to tell you about, uh, he wanted to go to the, uh, down the uh, Amazon River. So we went down in here, down the Amazon River, up to Machu Picchu, and spent, stayed out on the river on a little old thatch tut and where the pygmies were, and quite an experience for this guy. But, Tyler ate it all up. Uh, later, uh, Tyler has uh, traveled significantly, semester seeing a lot of other things. Today, Tyler is uh, lives in, in, in 2005. I took him and another grandson to the Congo, and uh, there he got hooked on wanting to really serve other people. And he wanted to go back to Africa, but he wanted to go to English-speaking country, so he wouldn't have to learn another language, so he went to Uganda. Tyler's lived there six years, and uh, he started his own business over there. And it, this kid doesn't, how he figured this out, I don't know, but he sells things like this, day calendars, anything that you can market. He goes to China continuously to the factories, does the purchasing. He just signed a contract with Shell Oil Company for all the eastern, uh, eastern, the country's eastern part of Africa to be a distributor, supplier for all their specialty products. And uh, he wrote a, some words of wisdom, and I want to share these with you. I think they're kind of um, astounding for a kid who grew up in Northwest Oklahoma. But he said, my with my 30th birthday approaching, I'm reflecting on the lessons I've learned through my experiences in the past decade. Below are the truly, or those truly that have shaped me. And one, I've learned that there's ten of these. It's not like the Ten Commandments, but ten good ones. <laughs> one, I've learned that my life's deepest purpose is to be loved. My, I've learned that my my daily pursuits must therefore be to become more loving and selfless through in my thoughts and my actions. 
I've learned that this present moment is all that I am. And the only way to experience life healthy and fully is to embrace and accept this moment's experiences. Whether that involves deep pain or pure joy or any other emotion. Now listen to this point. Fortunate, fortunately for me, depression taught me that in my early 20s. I learned that mental resistance to negative thoughts and feelings only exacerbate the depression. The alternative is to be aware of those thoughts and accept them by shining the light of inner awareness on them and reminding myself that my identity is not these thoughts, that I am much greater than these temporal thoughts. Number three, I have learned that to live an abundant life always requires taking steps into the unknown. Number four, I have learned that worldly riches and poverty lack significance entirely. It's pretty interesting. What matters is that each person's journey to become better and more loving person within the context of his or her life situation. Number five says, I've learned that life is about learning spiritual lessons. That each of the experiences that is thrown at us, the most challenging and lowest moments I've experienced in the past decade, have spurred the most spiritual development within me. In a weird way, I yearn or more of these tough times to come into my life. Think about that. Number six, I've learned that one of the most important choices we make in life is whom we surround ourselves with. Friends of depth are, are on a similar pursuit of wisdom and growth. They cultivate the same desires within me. Community is and must always be the bedrock of my life. Number seven, I've learned that capital, F-E-A-R, is the most destructive thought that it can exist within me. It leads me to selfishness. Yet I've also learned that fear is an illusion. That it only brought into existence when I am not fully alive within the, and aware of the present moment. And number eight, I've learned that true religion leads to an inner experience that cultivates love and tolerance for all people and all religions. And number nine, he said, I've learned that awareness of the inner self leads to authenticity, which is synonymous with humility. And number ten, I've learned that it's not the number of years that I live that really matters but the vitality that I bring each of those years that matters. I challenge each of you to concentrate on those thoughts as you make your journey to bridge out throughout this world, to build bridges of peace and understanding. You have the skills that are going to help to make the difference. And when you complete this evening, this afternoon, I'm going to present each of you a, 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 a copy of Tyler's synopsis for you to carry with you and to concentrate on that in your life. Congratulations on your achievement. Parents, let's congratulate these kids. Thank you, Senator Long. Okay, now is the fun putting part. Dr. Unibury, will you join us? Up? Yes, Dr. Longley, or Senator Longley, come up first. Michael Anderson. 
Anderson grew up in Tyler, Texas, and attended Baylor University, where he graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science in 2008. After graduating, he spent two years as a Peace Corps volunteer in Arctic Armenia. After spending the last semester in Washington, D.C., interning for the United States Trade Representative, he will serve as a technical advisor for the Carter Center in their Guinea Worm Eradication Program in Juba, Juba South, Africa, South Sudan. Congratulations. Our next graduate, Shaniqua Davis, is from Buffalo Valley, Oklahoma. She received her associate's degree in animal science from Eastern Oklahoma State College in Wilberton, Oklahoma, and received her bachelor's degree in animal science from Oklahoma State University. For her international experience, she went to Guatemala with Hunger Relief International, an NGO group based out of Shawnee, Oklahoma. She taught women container gardening and the nutritional factors that the vegetables they were growing could provide for them. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> You don't get a certificate. <laughs> she currently just started a new job as the Upshur that right? County Agricultural and Natural Resources Extension Agent in Gilmer, Texas. Because her focus area for her master's degree was in extension, she is able to work both with adults and youth in teaching them about community development, leadership, and many different agricultural practices. Congratulations. Our next graduate, Abby Goldenberg, is from McGregor, Texas. She graduated from Tarleton State University in 2012 with a Bachelor's of Science degree in Agricultural Service and Development. Upon her graduation, Abby went to work for Cargill Premix and Nutrition until she made the decision to come back to school and attend OSU. Abby spent six weeks in Australia this past summer at Blue Chip Genetics in Zeal Rust, Victoria. She worked primarily in promotion and calf care. Abby has spent her time here at Oklahoma State working in recruitment and marketing as the graduate teaching assistant for prospective students services for Kasner. Congratulations. Our next graduate, Taylor Ostergaard, now Jarman, is that correct? Yeah. She just recently got married, so congratulations. She grew up in Durango, Colorado on a small family farm. Being involved in showing livestock and participating in livestock judging, her love for agriculture and livestock grew. Taylor attended Casper College on a livestock judging scholarship from 2006 to 2007. After this, she served a full-time church mission in Alagos in Sur Sur yeah, in Brazil for 18 months. After returning home, she studied at Colorado State University on another livestock judging scholarship from 2008 to 2010, where she majored in animal science. Since this time, she has worked in biomedical research sales and started two companies, with one being Agricultural Energy Efficiency Consulting in the state of Utah, where she currently lives. She now lives in Pleasant Grove with her husband, and they raise composite cattle and club calves. Congratulations, Great. Taylor. And last but certainly not least, Cody Yunt is a native Oklahoman who grew up in OK, Oklahoma. <laughs> he is a first generation college student and received a Bachelor of Arts in Anthropology from Oklahoma Baptist University. After spending a year working for the Baltimore Public School System on a farm to school project, Cody decided to apply to Oklahoma State University's International Ag Program. He traveled this last summer with Shaniqua as well to Guatemala um, with Hunger Relief International. Cody plans to pursue a career in agricultural development and hopes to one day own his own farm with his wife, Lauren. Congratulations, Cody. Well, Graduates, congratulations. Let me be the first one to congratulate you as a group. And I'd like to say that your work has just begun. Thank you. <laughs> and keep us updated. That's my last word. <laughs> now, parents, and you can now congratulate.
congratulate them and please help yourself, uh, help fruit and cookies.